He comes to us by way of Chicago. Would you please welcome Jay Washington, everybody? Here's Jay Washington. Come on, Denver, y'all can do better than that. Give me some energy around here, y'all. This is a comedy show. I need everybody, energy from everybody. I appreciate that. I know a lot of y'all looking like this is a really big black dude on this stage with glasses. But don't trip. Meet me on my size, these glasses, and American Idol have raised my stock way the hell up. Do y'all not understand? They swear up and down I am Randy Jackson at Starbucks. I've been drinking free lattes all week. I ain't never had so much caffeine in my life. But I get it so much to the point where I want to meet Randy Jackson one day just so I can run up to him and be like, hey, do you know who you look like? He'd be like, I know, dog, check it right, Randy Jackson. Man, hell no, you look like me, goddammit. But do you mind if I sing for you real quick? But like I said, a lot of y'all looking like this is a really big black dude, and if we don't laugh, things could get bad quick. Furthest thing from the truth, I'm big for a reason. Should I eat? <laughs> Not gonna lie. But I had to stop being in denial about being big because I had a lot of changes in clothing. Not my shirts and pants, but my shoes. And every big person will agree with this. I started noticing all my gym shoes started looking like brand name house shoes and just leaned over to one side. So I said, I'm a smart ass. I know how to solve this problem. I put them on the opposite feet. My shoes just lean the other way. I now have a closet full of shoes that look like Crocs. I don't even wear no damn one. I don't. But another problem with me being big, well, the reason how I got big was the things I do. Like, I will order flavor with items that shouldn't have flavor. I'll go to a restaurant, ask a waitress, excuse me, can I have a lemonade flavored water? Should be, would you like a lemonade? I say no. I'd like a free glass of water, six slices of lemon, and eight packs of sugar. <laughs> Fuck it, you can give me lemonade. <laughs> but aside that, I am big for a whole nother reason. I spent the past 10 years of my life as a professional wrestler. That was not the reaction I was hoping to get out of y'all. I was hoping to get that, wow, that's interesting. Not the damn, you wasted your life. Appreciate it. But it's interesting being a wrestler. Like if I told you, for the past 10 years, I ran around with knee-high leather boots, some doubled up knee pads, some tight ass spandex just oiled the hell up, you would think I used to be a Lady Gaga backup dancer. Lowercase black eyed peas. But if I told you, for the past 10 years, I took a sometimes teenage boy, put his head between my legs, just to flip him up on my shoulders with his little man meat all in my face, slam his naked ass on a mat to lay on top of him and wait for a reaction, you would think I put an application in at the Catholic Church. <laughs> now, if I offended any form of altar boys or altar girls with that one, oops. My bad. Because it's interesting being a wrestler, like the moves. I love the sleeper hole. My ex-wife would always come to me and be like, Jay, come on, let's go to my mama's house. And I'd be like, all right, fine. And throw ass in the sleeper hole, like, shh, shh. Don't you fight it, don't you fight it, shh, shh. I don't like your mama and your mama don't like me, shh, shh. I tell my son, get your mama a pillow, get your mama, shh. Learn to wash your own goddamn dishes. Don't she look so peaceful? <laughs> no, we're just gonna leave her right here. We're gonna go back to playing this man. Cause I found out that sleeper hole works in so many situations. She used to want to have a movie night, so I picked the movie. Baby, what are we gonna watch? While you were sleeping? While you were asleep? Shh, shh, shh. Don't even worry about the movie. Shh. I think a black dude dies in the opening credits. Shh. I should have listened to my mother with a lot of stuff I did, especially my marriage. I grew up with one of them single mothers. And my mother was a strong woman. And my mother was from the projects, which means she was ghetto as hell. My mother was the type to send me to the store with $3 and tell me to get $5 worth of shit. 
I ask her, how am I supposed to do this? She like, make it happen. Woman, I am six, not a magician. <laughs> but like I said, she was a strong woman, and with that, wanted to teach me how to fight. Now that sounds cool, but if your mother is five feet two and swinging on you, I'm like, dog, shorty, quit playing. Dog, little lady, go sit in the high chair or something. And then one day she just swung on me and I accidentally had a reflex swing back. I was like, bah! ooh! <laughs> Mama, I am so sorry. Y'all, all I remember was a bright flash of light waking up at Holy Cross Hospital. My mother on the side of me talking about, damn shame, you can't take no head. <laughs> and I had wanted to say something back, but I had on an oxygen mask and little EKG tabs on. But I learned a lot from my mother. Like I learned you should never loan your mother no money. Because whenever you loan the money, it is no longer a loan, it is now a gift. Because I loaned my mother $100 and had the nerve to ask for it back and without breaking stride, that woman looked at me and was like, I don't owe you shit. I gave you life. So I'm confused at this time and I'm thinking, I am grown. I can say how I feel, and damn it, I need this money. I said, look here, lady, that was almost 30 years ago. I loaned you this money two weeks ago. Now, can you run me my money? Well, all I remember was a bright flash of light waking back up at Holy Cross Hospital. My mother on the side of me talking about your broke, grown ass still can't take no hit. I'm loving it being here in Denver for the first time. This is great. And I'm loving the fact there's a lot of different races here for live comedy. I love that. Please give it up for yourself for that. Because I've learned life is too short for petty BS racism. And I'm going to tell you how you find that out. Start interracial dating. Because like I recently had a chance to date a white girl. Yes, the chocolate man will do. And it was cool because I was her first black guy. She was my first white girl. And she was so excited. She was like, oh my God, I've always wanted to date a black guy. I was like, oh my God, I've always wanted good credit. <laughs> I had the cutest little nickname for her when I introduced her to my buddies. I was like, what's up, y'all? This is my baby, A15. A15, this is the fellas. Don't y'all mess this up. She gonna leave me because I asked her to co-sign the finance on the cops. Me, just selfish. But like I said, life is too short for petty racism because I was watching this documentary the other day and this racist white guy needed a blood transfusion and right before they took him in the room, he popped up off the gurney and was like, make sure they don't put none of that colored blood in me. And I'm thinking, you mean the red blood in the plastic bag? <laughs> colored? Because it made me wonder, what's the worst thing that can happen to a white guy if you get some black blood in you? You wake up on a six piece fried chicken with salt and pepper and mild sauce? You have an uncontrollable urge for flaming Hots with nacho cheese. Or worst case scenario, you want to watch both seasons of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. What? What? Because as a black man, if I get some white blood in me, I'm not going to ask those dumbass questions. I'm going to ask real things like, do they have AIDS? No. Do they have the sugar? For those who don't understand, the sugar is what we black people call diabetes, and a lot of us think it's contagious. Do they have the sugar? Well, let me ask you this really important question. Will this white blood improve my credit score because I'm trying to get a loan on a car? The white chick I was dating didn't want to finance it. No shit. We're coming into this real big technology age and everybody's on Facebook and I'm on Facebook. And I just want to say that if you're on Facebook and in a relationship, Facebook is the goddamn devil. Because it can break up your relationship because now you can be tagged in pictures and don't even know about it. I did a show out in, in another city and I stayed at the after party, had a good time, came home a little late, told my girl the show ran long. She was, oh, it ran long, huh? I was like, yeah. She said, did you take any pictures? A few. She was like, I know, I printed them all off your Facebook page. <laughs> Shit. So then I get questioned about, why is your arm around this chick's shoulder and around this chick's waist? I'm like, well, they liked my act and wanted to take a picture, and I felt inclined to do so. She was like, okay, mister, explain this picture. Now, I just happened to have the Captain America thumbs up like this. I had an icy cold corona in my other hand, and for the fellas, I had my face in the cleavage of the most round, beautiful, perfect, supple, symmetrical 38 double D breasts that God has ever put on this green earth. 
But, but I told her what had happened was I had slipped and she was being a good Samaritan trying to help me keep me from falling and right in the middle of my explanation, all I remember was a bright flash of light waking up at Holy Cross Hospital with her on the side of me talking about your mama said your ass can't take no in. Hey, y'all been great. That's my time. My name is Jay Washington. <laughs>